When I released the building demo for my museum game, I received a bunch of feedback from everyone that tried it. A friend of mine noticed a couple of visual bugs with items appearing on top of each other or flickering, fighting to be seen. I wasn't too concerned because no one else had mentioned it. However, as screenshots of museums people had created started to come through, I noticed it was a much bigger issue than I had initially thought. So let's get it fixed. How's it going everybody? I'm Lewis, also known as Skeffles, and welcome to the 7th devlog for my museum management game. A game inspired by the likes of Rollercoaster Tycoon, Theme Hospital and The Sims, where you create and manage your very own museums. I recently finished rewriting the code for controlling the grid that the game plays on. I think the grid is now significantly more stable, however all the player input is currently broken. So when it came to picking up tasks from the demo feedback, rendering and drawing felt like a natural fit. I had no idea where to start when it came to this issue. I only had one report of it from my friend and a few examples from other people's screenshots. My best approach was to replicate what was in those screenshots, look at the code and try and figure out what the hell was going on. Whilst playing around with different setups, I noticed every instance of the issue involved rectangular objects. Sometimes they will render on top of neighboring objects, sometimes behind, and occasionally flickering between the two. This was really confusing. I didn't know why it was happening or why it felt so inconsistent. To get to the bottom of this, I needed to look at the code. The first thing we need to understand is how Monogame, the framework I'm using, draws things. It has a few different modes for drawing. Say we've got a scene with three objects. We call the draw function on each object, one, two, and three. Deferred and immediate modes will draw things in the order they are called, so one, two, three. Texture mode draws things grouped by texture. So if we give the objects a texture each and object one and three have the same texture, then the draw order is one, three, two. Finally, back to front and front to back modes draw things using a depth value. Obviously they're mirrors of each other, but the basics are that objects are sorted by their depth value and then drawn. If we give each object a depth value, so object one has a depth of one, object two has a depth of 0.5, and object three has a depth of zero, then the draw order is now three, two, one. My game uses the front to back mode because it gives the best control over how things are drawn, except in one case. Two items with the same depth will flicker against each other because Monogame uses an unstable sort for performance. This is the reason for one of the rendering issues. Objects flickering are using the same depth value. But why are some objects using the same depth value? They look like they should be on top of each other and therefore have different depth values. So now we've got to understand rendering the game grid. The grid uses an isometric perspective, which for simplicity means objects at the top should always be behind the objects at the bottom. The demo code tried this by taking an object Y coordinate and working out a depth value based on the grid size. In theory, this is a pretty solid approach. However, there were two major issues with how I implemented it in the demo. First, objects were being drawn based on their Y coordinate in the isometric grid. This is wrong due to the skewed nature of the grid. Both X and Y grid coordinates affect an object's world coordinate. This resulted in objects in the same column getting equal depth values and causing flickering effects. Secondly, where do you measure an object's depth from? Let's start with the bottom of an object. This makes sense because lower objects render over higher objects. Unfortunately, this breaks when combining different size objects as large objects will have a lower down point, causing them to render over smaller objects. You get a similar issue with using the top of an object, except the smaller object behind the large one render on top. This leaves the best option as the middle of the object. This works brilliantly with square objects, however, how do you work out the middle of a rectangular object? In the demo, I decided the best approach will be to use the left side of every object. This equates to the center for square objects and was roughly correct for rectangular objects. However, it's in this roughness where the problem lies. No single side is wholly appropriate for choosing a rectangular object's depth. 
So those are the two problems I need to resolve. Objects using their grid coordinates to work out their depth and objects using their left side to work out their depth. The first issue was relatively easy to fix. I created a get depth function to take a grid coordinate, translate it to world space and return a depth value. To make sure it works, I included a number of simple tests that check the depth returned for different positions in the grid. The second issue is a little bit harder. It seems that a single depth value isn't appropriate for rectangular shapes. So what if they could be split up into a left and right side, each with their own depth values? To do this, I created what I call a split sprite. This is essentially two separate sprites that act as one. They sit next to each other, but can have different properties applied to them. With that in mind, I can create objects with a split sprite and use the get depth function to work out appropriate depth values for both the left and right sides of an object. This works brilliantly, and I'm now in the middle of combining it with the new grid code to recreate the original demo. Once I've built that back, I should really be able to dive deep into making changes based on your feedback. I cannot wait. I hope you've enjoyed watching this devlog for my museum management game. Leave the video a like to let me know you did. Comment to give me any feedback and don't forget to subscribe to get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.